We've all been in someone else's Twitch channel before. And all of a sudden they got pop up a different or separate camera angle. And we thought to ourselves, oh, that is so freaking cool. I wish I could have that for my Twitch stream as well. Well, today we're going to show you how to do that, how to set it up and uh, how to have a separate camera angle for your Twitch or YouTube live stream with just a press of a button and a little bit of software as well for little to no cost at all. All right, so one of the first things you're going to need to set up a uh, second camera angle for your live stream is a cell phone. Uh, whether you, you got a current cell phone or whether you've got an old cell phone, for uh, in this case right here, I've got an old cell phone that I'm using uh, that while I upgraded my phone back in November. So got my new cell phone and I figured what the heck, why not use my second cell phone or my old cell phone? Uh, to be able to set up a uh, secondary camera angle. In the event that you don't even have a camera for your live stream, you can actually use your cell phone this way to set up a main or primary camera for your live stream as well. But one of the first things you're gonna do right off the bat is go to your Google Play Store or iOS store as well. But let's open up our phone right here. So here we got our phone. This is, I've got an Android phone. So I'll go to the Play Store right off the st start and you're going to type in droid cam in the search bar and you're going to be greeted with a couple of different options right here you've got droid cam webcam for pc droid cam x which is hd webcam for pc and you're going to be greeted with droid cam obs as well i personally have the droid cam x uh hd webcam for pc i think the initial cost was like 6.99 one time purchase so that is what we're going to be using for reference today uh, in the event that you just want to test it out for free, pick the other droid cam software and install it that way. What do you do is once, so once you get it installed, you're going to open it up and it's going to give you your Wi-Fi IP address. It's going to give you your device IP address, and it's going to give you a droid cam port address as well. And then there's going to be some IP cam access as well. So you can actually access your uh, camera inside of a web browser as well. So once you get the software installed on your phone, it's gonna require you to go to your browser and install another piece of software on your computer. That way you'll be able to connect the two from your phone to your computer and be able to have access to your phone inside of your computer. So let's just go to your web browser. Once you go to your web browser, uh, you're gonna search up Droid Cam. Uh, one of the first websites that takes you to is Dev47 Apps. Uh, this is the Droid Cam client. It's going to tell you to download it for Windows. Once you click on it, you're going to install the software onto your computer. After you get it successfully installed, you'll be greeted with the program itself once you start it. So after you get the software successfully installed, you're going to head back and start up the application for Droid Cam client. And all you got to do is once you get it installed, you're going to start it just like you would any other singular program. So let's just open up our Droid app client and this is the screen you're going to be greeted with right off the bat before you do anything else uh you just go in here familiarize yourself with the different things inside here you got compact mode always on top uh stats that will show the actual stats on the uh, screen uh hd mode hd mode is only available if you use a paid version uh if you're not using the paid version it uses a lower resolution but let's just click on it just for uh the sake of the video so right there, as you can see, you've got our webcam output options. You can set it for 480p, 720p, uh, 4.3 or 720p, 16 by nine. And then you have the high definition resolution, which is 1080p. That option is only available if you are using the paid version of the software. Again, it's just a one-time purchase. I think of 699 or 799 for the actual app. And once you set it to 1080p, it's gonna require you to restart your computer and restart the app as well. But let's get out of this little part of the screen and go back and show how to set it up on uh, So let's just cancel that. So right back, you're gonna hit the Droid Cam. You're gonna hit Start. To be able to stream the footage from your camera to your OBS, you're gonna have to connect it in one of two ways. You can connect it over a USB connection by having a USB cable connected to your computer and one connected to your phone as well. If you're not greeted with the phone that is connected, you can actually hit the refresh button, which is that button right there. And it will refresh and should show you the phone that you have connected to the software or any events you don't have it want to connect it over USB. You can use Wi-Fi as well. And this is actually really nice in the event that you don't have 
you know, like a really long USB cable. So you can have the camera light. If you look behind me all the way over there by the light, there's actually a tripod in the back. So in the event that I wanted to have the phone set up with that on the tripod, I could use connect it over Wi-Fi and it would actually show the camera the exact same way, whether I were using USB or Wi-Fi connection. All right, so uh, let's just hit start right here. And it should go through the process and there we go. So as you can see right here, there I am being captured by my phone through the Droid Cam software. So now let's go about adding this scene to our OBS software. That way we can have a camera angle or a secondary camera angle inside of OBS. I currently have it already set up. So I'll show you how to show it what it looks like real quick. So I currently I'm using my stream deck to be able to control it, but you don't have to have a stream deck to do this. But as you can see, we've got our secondary camera angle right there. Uh, that is coming directly from our phone. And then with just the press of a button, I can switch back to my other camera angle that is coming from my Elgato face cam. All right, so it's actually relatively easy to be able to set up our phone as a video capture device inside of OBS. All you're gonna do is hit the plus mark, go down through the list. We're gonna find a video capture device. You are actually greeted with create a new, in this case, we're gonna uh, change the name of our video capture device to Let's just erase that, call it Droid Cam. So uh, there it is right there, Droid Cam. We're gonna tap OK. Make sure Mate Source Visible is checked. So uh, now we have our Droid Cam software right here. Uh, it's already picked the wrong one. You have several different options, Droid Cam 2, Droid Cam 3. Uh, the different ones add a different kind of color to the background, but either one worked really well. And there we go. There is our Droid Cam software. It detects it as a camera source, just like it would inside of anything else. It detects it just as a camera source, just like our webcam. But let me make this window a little bit smaller so you can actually see it. All right, there is our camera. So as you can see, there is our original camera down here on the left-hand side. And then we have our secondary camera angle set up inside of OBS. And now you can just move it around. You can resize it just like you would. Only downside to having a camera source like this with the Droid Cam software, you do not have any options at all to be able to adjust the camera like you would a standard webcam. But let me close it real quick and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So as I was saying, you can have the option just like you normally would to deactivate configure video. You know, inside of OBS, you can use the configure video button to adjust the sliders left and right. If you click configure video inside of OBS using the Droid Cam, it will not open any window whatsoever. So any settings adjustment must be done directly from the Droid Cam software itself. All right, so let's pop back over here real quick to our other screen. That way we can see how to adjust the camera settings inside of the Droid Cam client. So here we are back inside of the Droid Cam client software. And if you notice, there are a few buttons located across the bottom of the Droid Cam software. There is a zoom in, zoom out option. So you can actually zoom in as much as you want, zoom out. There is no pan option, unfortunately. So you only have the option to zoom in and zoom out. You can actually cut on the light on your phone this way. There is an autofocus option as well. So you can turn autofocus on or off. You can actually flip the camera angle, whether it's left, whether it's right. You can actually do this part actually inside of OBS as well. You can rotate the camera as well to different angles. In the event that you want to make something special with it, have a reward where the camera is upside down inside of OBS. And then you can take a screenshot of your current image that is located on the Droid Cam. There are also some other options as well by clicking the three dots. You can adjust the brightness, you can adjust the white balance, you can adjust the exposure as well by turning the exposure up or down. If you are choosing to record audio from your phone, you can actually turn the audio boost up as well. However, I would suggest not using the audio that is coming directly from your phone because it can get distorted by using the volume boost. So just like I was saying, you can actually adjust the settings for your Droid Cam inside of here. So white balance, you can set it to automatic. If you like the automatic looks, uh, fluorescent, incandescent, uh, warm fluorescent as well. And it changes the overall color and look of your Droid Cam by choosing the different ones. So uh, let's just say you like the way the twilight looks. So I give you, I guess, a, like a 
a darker or like it would be darker outside a little bit, I guess. A lot of times I actually just use the automatic option or the white balance. It does pretty good depending on your phone, I guess. So by choosing the different white balances, you can actually adjust how the camera looks. Uh, if you don't like the way it looks on automatic because uh, it doesn't work well with your phone or whatever, you could go through the different ones and pick the one that actually looks the best or you think looks the best on screen. The next feature is the exposure lock. With the exposure locked on, it prevents your phone from trying to auto adjust the exposure on the camera from inside the phone. So I leave this on. However, there is an exposure offset as well that you can use to lower and raise the exposure manually. Uh, if it's too high, you can lower it back down. So once you feel it's in the right position or you get the uh, right exposure look, you can leave the offset right there in the case right here. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit because I know the lighting is not directly behind my phone. So it makes it a little bit kind of uh, washed out or a little bit grainy. You don't want to have that really grainy look coming from your phone. There is also a brightness and a contrast. Honestly, I would leave these settings alone because if you adjust it too much, the darkness can get really, really low or really, really high. So I just hit the reset button and reset it back to what it normally was. The contrast is the same way if you do it too much it washes you out. And if you lower down too much, it kind of looks weird as well. But again, just leave the contrast and the brightness alone, unless you feel like it really needs a little bit of adjusting. But yeah, this is how you set up Droid Cam to add a secondary camera angle to your YouTube or Twitch live streams. In the event that you're not a live streamer at all, and you want to have a secondary camera angle for uh, TikTok or whatever you're using it for, uh, Droid Cam does this really well. I'm really impressed by the options that it does give you to be able to set up your phone for a secondary camera. But anyway, I'll leave links down below to all of the software that was used inside of this video. In the event that you want to download this for yourself and set it up, uh, Joy Cam Link software. This is not a sponsored video at all. This is something that I found to use. Uh, having a secondary camera angle is actually really nice. At least I thought so anyway. But anyway, guys and gals, Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, much love, peace out, and we'll see you soon.